Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of AMA Air. I'm Chris Savage. And I'm Aaron Dobbs. Coming up today, we're going to tell you about a modeler who took his grief and turned it into an international event. And we'll also visit with the campers of Camp AMA. But as always, let's get started with some news from around the hobby. It's that time of year again when thousands gather in Oshkosh, Wisconsin for the world's greatest aviation celebration. EAA Air Venture is coming up on July 24th through the 30th, and once again this year, the AMA is partnering with the EAA to bring discounted tickets to our members. AMA members get a $7 discount off a non-EAA member admission by using the promo code AMA at checkout. Last week, more than 1,100 college students from six different continents competed in a five-day event at Spaceport America, trying to take home the first Spaceport America Cup. Teams had to design, build, and launch a rocket to the height of either 10,000 or 30,000 feet and had to weigh no less than nine pounds. They competed in six different categories and a panel of judges selected the University of Michigan as the overall winner from those categories and the first winners of the Spaceport America Cup. Daniel Hicks, CEO of Spaceport America, had this to say about the event. Reflecting on the highlights of Spaceport America Cup, the most impressive thing was watching these innovative students from around the world pushing the edge of rocket science as they develop future capabilities for humankind. And Spaceport America will be the host for the AMA-sanctioned Spaceport America Drone Summit coming up this September. Visit SpaceportAmericaDroneSummit.com for more information on that event. Generations of Flight is all about showcasing model aircraft enthusiasts and their love for the hobby. Each week, one story is selected and featured as the story of the week. This month's winners were Donnie, Craig, Susan, Donald, and Alex. Donnie shared a photo from the 2016 Youth Masters. Craig spoke of his late father. Susan and Donald shared how they got into the hobby, and Alex described his grandfather's Sig Cougar. To read these stories and others, visit generationofflight.com. To share your story, click on Submit a Photo. You can also help preserve the history of model aviation by visiting the National Model Aviation's Museum's History Project. You can read biographies, club histories, company histories, and even submit your own. If you're interested in submitting your story or other modeling history, information can be found at modelaircraft.org. American political website The Hill published an op-ed from a familiar name recently. AMA President Rich Hansen provided the piece laying out the importance in the special rule for model aircraft and the education through a community-based organization rather than regulation is the key to safe and responsible flying. You can find a link to Rich's op-ed by visiting air.modelaircraft.org. Coming up, we'll tell you how a modeler channeled his grief into creating an international event. Stick around. For decades, across generations, modelers have come together to compete and push the boundaries of flight. This summer, that tradition continues. Witness history at the National Era Modeling Championships. When Bob Martin lost his wife several years ago, he was overwhelmed by his grief, but some of his close modeling friends saw that he was struggling and wanted to help. So they suggested a sailplane safari where Bob and his friends would just grab their sailplanes and go from one flying site to another. They began planning their trip with Torrey Pines as the starting point, but their original plan soon morphed into something else. When Bob and his friends were planning their trip to Torrey Pines, the word spread and a thread was created on RC groups. Before they knew it, what was intended to be the first stop in a sailplane safari became the Katie Martin Tribute Fly-In. After its success, the fly-in became an annual event. I want to thank all of you for showing up. It's a great crowd. Lots and lots of airplanes. I'm very, very happy about that. The Katie Martin Tribute Fly-In celebrated its seventh year with even more success, but every year Bob Martin makes sure attendees know the event's origins. 
Prior to the launch of the original Hobie Hawk that Bob bought for his wife, he tells her story. We were flying powered airplanes and she didn't like the oil and she didn't like the noise and she didn't like that sort of thing. And we were riding our bicycles at the Rose Bowl and she saw these beautiful gliders flying around. She says, I want one. Well, I always gave her anything she, she wanted. Usually. And the Hobie Hawk is what she got. According to Bob, the aircraft had been advertised as a beginner's plane. Well, not so. It was not a trainer by any means. And we ended up having to get other airplanes. But that was the first airplane I bought for. And that one purchase was very significant. Had I not bought that airplane, and had I not got involved in sailplanes, none of the Bob Martin products would ever have existed. So that makes her pretty important in the whole scheme of things, right? Bob cannot stress the role Katie played in his life enough. She was a wonderful person for me. But more importantly, the reason we're here today is that she was the person that, that knew when to give me a kick in the butt, when to leave me alone, when to protect me so I could be creative. She was the heart and the soul of Bob Martin RC Models. And Bob is certainly not the only one who understands the scale of Katie's impact. When she died, um, my friend Ren and some other people told me that they're still flying my airplanes all over the world. Um, and I checked the internet, and sure enough, um, which astonished me. But something else bearing the Martin name also became international. For those of you who don't know, there are people at this, well, time change, but there's people today in Spain and England and Germany um, and North Africa that are flying in tribute to Katie also. So. Ultimately, losing a spouse is very difficult and the grief may always be present. But the most important thing I think that you all have to realize is that the airplane we're about to launch is the original Obi Hawk. Come on, Bob. Um, but Bob Martin found a way for his wife's legacy to live across the world. For many kids, summer means camp, and for some, that meant Camp AMA. Young RC pilots came to Muncie from as far as California for this year's Camp AMA. The group of 37 learned from instructors, worked on their models, and flew airplanes and drones together. Only about half were new campers, but everyone walked away with a new skill, better control, or just found a newfound desire to fly. They were on site from after breakfast until dinner, Monday through Friday, and the time that the campers weren't sweating in the mid-June heat was spent bowling, racing down a slip and slide, pelting their instructors with water balloons, or just hanging out in the hotel, or sleeping, of course, for at least a few hours each night. Camp director Jesse Sims even organized the traditional night fly and bonfire on Thursday of camp week. Both the instructors and the youth agreed that going home was the worst part, because when you're up in the air with your new lifelong friends around you, you never want to come down. That's all we have for this episode of AMA Air. If you have a story you think we should have on the show, visit air.modelaircraft.org and tell us about it by sending us an airmail. And if you're not already a member of the AMA, visit modelaircraft.org and sign up today. We'll see you next time, everybody. But for now, it's time to get flying.